Hi everybody, it is February 28, 2022. I just want to pass on some documents, videos, and lists that I had bookmarked. Um, the Young Global Leaders of the World Economic Forum from 1993 until 2021. A whole lot. A whole lot. And this goes on forever, but Ivanka Trump, Tulsi Gabbard, yes. Um, and I just want to say that they go after the young because the young are more ambitious. Uh, they haven't really, they may have laid the foundations of their career, but have not yet established or achieved what they want. And ego, 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 very easy to capture the young who are aspiring to be a leader or aspiring to be very materially uh, successful. And while I'm not defending any of these young leaders, does it mean that every young leader knows what is going on? Knows about uh, the World Economic Forum, the Great Reset, where it all is going. No, I don't think they do. Um, but I will say this, there's an awful lot of information coming out, surely, from an, a lot of different people. But there's been enough information about the World Economic Forum for these young leaders to perhaps have they have stumbled upon that and if they have not come out and publicly denounced the World Economic Forum then I do hold them responsible regardless of whether or not they're actively involved in reshaping the world for the quote-unquote elites pleasure so um, I just want to go through Trudeau, of course, yes, um, and I, I'm probably not even going to get through all of it, but uh, you can take a look. I will link below to everything. Forum of Young Global Leaders, World Economic Forum, 91 to 93, whoa, an explosion of young global leaders all over the world. Ah, uh, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's our fabulous PM of New Zealand. Am I right about that? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, it looks like her. But so many in government, so many in media, corporate, every industry, every industry, CEOs of all of these corporations, companies, uh, multi uh, corps, and they're when you look and see the corporations involved, their CEOs, isn't it interesting that those corporations are uh, cheerleaders for Black Lives Matter? All right. Gordon Brown, Prime Minister of the UK, uh, 1993. Boutros Ghali, who was the, um, the former General Secretary Secretary, Secretariat of the United Nations, if I'm right on that. Uh, Richard Branson, former uh, founder and chairman of Virgin Group. Um, William Gates, Bill Gates. Yo-Yo Ma. Yep, they have the celebrities in there as well. Um, Angela Merkel. Victor Orban, who was Prime Minister of Hungary. Nicolas Sarkozy, France is a big player. William Hague, Secretary of State, 1994. Uh, Alexander Kwanuski, uh, President of Poland, sorry. Um, I, I literally went through this three quarters of this list because it's so long. Jeffrey Sachs, who's a big push pusher 
And he's so intimate with the Pope, the Vatican, Jeffrey Sachs. Um, and he's a uh, contributor on mainstream media, always talking about, oh, how ah, the world is the way it is. We need to do things Jody Foster. Um, Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, Google, and all of the Google top players like Sergey Brin, Larry Page. And all, you know, the names that I'll mention, but a whole lot of these people live, they live lives without worry. Um, and I was upset to see this. Um, our uh, Aaron Hattie Roy, who is a fabulous author, champion of women's rights, for sure. Jack Ma, chairman and chief executive of Alibaba. Alibaba. I, I'm going to be mispronouncing words, but I just wanted to get this information out there. Um, and the kings and the queens and the princesses and the princes of uh, Sweden and um, here, Farid Zakari, who is a God, I used to respect some of these people, but um, CNN, yeah, he's uh, also Council on Foreign Relations. There's a lot of interlap between World Economic Forum, CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, and the Trilateral Commission, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, Larry Page, co-founder and chief uh, Google, chief executive author. Um, officer. Denmark, the Prince of Denmark. So, yeah, I would say that there's an awful lot of people who have no idea. And, you know, these uh, Davos meetings that a whole lot of those um, seminars and the meetings that they have with all of the principal players are posted on YouTube. That's that's the stuff they don't care if the public sees or not. That's that's the stuff, the information that has that spin of shaping a fabulous world that uh, of just love and fairness and and everyone's equal and it's going to be fabulous. The real meetings are held secretly. And there's a group, it's the 30 member group, which I'll show you. Um, that's where the real meetings take place about transforming the world. But here, Crown Prince of Norway, um, Alexander of the Netherlands, the Prince of the Netherlands, uh, Secretariat, um, Yeah, Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, Christia Freeland, who is on the Board of Trustees of the World Economic Forum. Uh, presidents all over the world, uh, you know, President of El Salvador, um, 2005, President of Guyana, 2005. They've got every continent, uh, every country, every industry, every corporation. So when I have said throughout the years, people have no idea how massive is this web. The tentacles are so all over, intricate, they're overlapping, and how do we weed this, you know, out? We, there's no way. Uh, Newsom, Gavin Newsom, who 2005 was the mayor of the San Francisco, now is governor of California. Samantha Power, who was a big player in uh, what was taking place in what 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 was the year? Well, I'll put it 2011 to 2014. She was the United Nations ambassador. Obama, 
and a big player in what was taking place in Ukraine during those years, Jonathan Soros, who's a son of George, John Sununu. There are a lot of senators, a lot of congressmen. Um, so, yeah, it goes on forever. And I did then get a little tired. Three, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just about halfway down, halfway down. Got a little tired, and I just because I was literally looking through every name. Um, but it's you know in every country. You know the the Queensland Australia is. World Economic Forum, and that's why you have that corrupt um, premier. I can't remember her name. Paluski or something? Palachek? Palacheka? I don't know. But, yes, the World Economic Forum has made Queensland in Australia uh, a hub, a uh, industrial hub. And you know, these people who are so corrupt, they never face, they never face the, um, the consequences of their corruption because they're so protected, so pro highly protected. So let me, there was just one name that I think I was surprised about. I don't even know now. But it was Ivanka Trump, Tulsi Gabbard, um, I did highlight, oh yes, <laughs> Abram Kendi, who, who is Mr. CRT, Mr. CRT. 2021. That was his graduating date of the World Economic Forum. He is, he says the most stupid things, stupid, I mean, regarding race, that it, it's how do these people stay in their positions? Mouthing, spewing, stupidity, idiocy, bringing us backwards. It's all Marxism. How do they stay in their positions? And they're still invited back on mainstream media, spewing this. It's not nonsense. It is evil idiocy because they're protected. So there's also the power of youth in action, global shapers. Global shapers, the young global shapers of the World Economic Forum. And they have uh, 149 countries. Their alumni is 4,102. And I believe that I don't think that this is an updated. Uh, it hasn't updated. I'm just going to refresh the page. Um, no. Uh, 458 hubs, 10,319 shapers. And I know one of the shapers is the mayor of Boston. Massachusetts. So it's a little difficult to go once you get to the page where these shapers are. Um, yeah, trying to go through all of them, very difficult because they just list the name. Uh, and well, when you have 10,000, the page <laughs> goes on and on and on. Um, the Trilateral Commission founded by David Rockefeller is, if you don't know, you should find out a little about it. Now, I remember reading an article that they were talking about the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, but in that article it said th that was where I got that the World Economic Forum, what we see publicly is nothing. 
And it's the bullshit that they put out for the public. What goes on behind the scenes? The Trilateral Commission. The Group of 30, is it? The Group of 30. Right here. This. These are the powerful players. So the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab was put out front so that everybody could focus on them while these guys meet to do their dastardly deeds. And a lot of them are uh, former bank heads, central bank heads, former governor of Bank of Israel, uh, chairman Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it. Again, I'll link below to everything. This was the guy who in a video said that, you know, cash, we don't have control over the cash. And essentially, this guy said that, you know, we will have far more control over digital money. And that's why they're going, digital money. It was this fat you know, it's amazing, too, because, you know, I don't like, you know, to ever say anything about the way people look, but it's hard when they're so evil. <laughs> it's, you know, but Mark Carney, the United Nations Special Envoy on Climate Action, former governor, Bank of England, um, former president of the European Central Bank, you've got a chief economic advisor, uh, president of Queens College, Cambridge, former president, Federal Reserve Bank of New York, former governor of Banco de España, uh, uh, Spain Central Bank, former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, the Banco Central do Brasil, um, former governor, former president, CEO, TIAA, and I can't remember what that stands for, Timothy Geithner, former U.S. Treasury, Treasury Secretary. Um, but we also have in here Janet Yellen, currently the U.S. Treasury Secretary, former chair of the Federal Reserve System, People's Bank of China. All these countries come together, you know, and these people in China are working for the CCP. You don't get to work, you know, especially when you are, you know, a, a governor of the People's Bank. You follow the orders of the Chinese Communist Party. You are a member of the Chinese Communist Party. So, Mexico. England, Poland, Argentina. These are the power players as well. The Trilateral Commission. Now, I will link below and they have a list which, ah, great. I waited too long. Hang on. Okay, on this PDF highlighting program, uh, if I highlight and then spend too much time off the document, then it reverts back. So, just want to show you some of the Trilateral Commission. The membership in January 2022. The membership list just got longer and longer as the Trilateral Commission uh, existed throughout the years. Paul Volcker, who I believe was the, wasn't, well, he's been in and out of the U.S. government, but he was the Treasury Secretary under Obama, but also, I think under, oh, I can't remember. I'm going to say Carter. Could be wrong. Richard Fontaine, um, North American director of the Trilateral Commission, also worked in the Defense Department, and I read a very uh, uh, extensive piece on the corruption, the fraud 
the stealing of trillions, remember, uh, right, what was it, um, 2010, 20, 01, um, the Secretary of Defense, see his face, but I can't remember his name, okay, um, announced to the American public that trillions of dollars, I think he said two trillion, were gone missing in the Department of Defense. And then the following day, not even 24 hours later, boom, 9-11 occurs. Everybody forgets about that. That was purposeful. Richard Fontaine was a big player in the missing money. Okay, so the North American group, a lot of names, Steve Bunnell, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Ash Carter, uh, U.S. Department of Defense, former Secretary of Defense, Michael Chertoff, remember him? the 9-11 guy, hey, I'm going to be the first secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, your homeland. That should have raised eyebrows with Americans. Why are we now calling this our homeland? That sounds a little kind of Nazi-like. Um, Michael Duffy, uh, deputy op-ed editor of the Washington Post. Lawrence Fink, BlackRock, CEO of BlackRock. That guy is getting tons and tons and tons of money from our so-called <laughs> Federal Reserve. That's a private bank that prints out money, hands it to BlackRock. BlackRock, well involved in buying up the world, buying up American real estate because the American dream is about renting if you can afford it, no longer owning. BlackRock has become uh, a very big landlord in America. Jane Harmon, a former member of the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. Did she come from Texas? I think she did. Could be wrong, but uh, Joseph Kennedy III, former congressman, Robert Kimmett, uh, former U.S. Undersecretary of State, former U.S. ambassador to Germany, Henry Kissinger, Nicholas Kristof, uh, columnist for the New York Times, Jamie Misk, Misk, who is former deputy director of the CIA, Andrea Mitchell, chief correspondent, chief Washington correspondent for NBC, Susan Mullary, Molinari, was a former member of Congress, I don't want to say New York, I could be wrong, uh, John Negroponte. And by the way, Trump, Trump appointed some of these people like Negroponte, um, former ambassador to the United Nations, Honduras, uh, Mexico, the Philippines, Iraq, deputy secretary of state, first director of national intelligence, that guy is an evil, well, I could say something about most of these people, but that would make the video very long. Joseph Nye, um, National Intelligence Council, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Defense, Trilateral Commission, Ben Nye, uh, Department of Treasury, David Petraeus, Brett Stevens, who if you don't know, op-ed columnist, New York Times, Frances Townsend, Trump uh, uh, appointed her to be the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. Corporate Secretary and Chief Com Compliance Officer, former assistant to the President for Homeland Security. I, I think she was. Well, doesn't matter. Um, they get their orders from their handler at the Trilateral Commission and then they execute them 
in the countries where they are sitting in positions of power. Former members in public service today, Tony Blinken. Tony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State. Right now, Blinken. Huh, interesting. Look at what's going on. Uh, Brainard, who's uh, one of the uh, governors of the Federal Reserve. Wendy Sherman, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, right under Blinken. And Jake Sullivan, U.S. National Security Advisor. All involved in what's happening in Ukraine right now. So, if you have an interest, if you don't know what's going on with this trilateral commission and how it has been controlling the United States. No, those presidents we have, they're not elected. They're selected. They're selected. And uh, Anthony Sutton did, I think, the most extensive research of anyone on the trilateral commission as well as the other secret societies like um, the Order of Skull and Bones at Yale University. But there's a lot of videos on Odyssey. Interesting, when I first came on to YouTube 13 years ago, there were a lot of videos. You could just put in the search bar and come up with anything. Now you're not coming up with much. Go to Odyssey, maybe BitChute. But put in Anthony Sutton, put in trilater Trilateral Commission, and you will find an awful lot of videos. As well, Odyssey allows people to uh, publish documents or books. And this book in particular is Trilaterals Over America by Anthony Sutton. And what's the contents? What is the Trilateral Commission? Uh, new World Order as the Objective, Policies for Monopoly Control, Two Decades of Trilateral Scheming in Agriculture, Take Control of the Food, You've Got Control of the People, Trilateral, They Don't Like Taxation for Themselves, uh, Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace, Politics of New World Order, Friends of the New World Order, Transcending Marxism, Old and New, Marxists, well, one of them is Black Lives Matter, where the uh, Trilateral Commission went wrong. Um, who else were members of the Trilateral Commission? President Carter, you know, we think we elected a peanut farmer to be the president? No. Carter, his administration? filled with trilaterals. Uh, Clinton, Bill Clinton. Very interesting book. Very interesting. And you might, even if you just read it, I prefer to read actual books. I do end up reading off the screen, but um, I will link below again to everything, and you can check this book out and learn a lot. For sure, because they talk about that new world order. And boy, they've been at it for a very, very, very long time. Very long time. So, um, I will also link below to Order of Skull and Bones, uh, Anthony Sutton's research on this secret society. No, it's not, it, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's called conspiracy fact. And people just don't want to look into it. They just think that you're crazy. Well, isn't it a little crazy for a little, little secret society coming out of Yale to have both presidential candidates, Kerry and Bush, running against each other? That's a little odd, don't you think? All right. Um, 
I'll end with this, but this was interesting, and I just came across this. It's a very poor video, um, but just listen to a few minutes of, of what Press for Truth has to say here. And you can clearly see, as I found right here on page 103, that Dr. Fauci was invited to the Trilateral Commission in Washington, D.C. from March 13th to the 15th. Dear Dr. Fauci, the Trilateral Commission will hold its invitation-only annual planetary meeting in Washington, D.C. on March 13th to the 15th, 2020. I would like to invite you to participate in a conversation at the meeting on responding to the coronavirus and global pandemics. Ladies and gentlemen, it was on March 8th, 2020 that Dr. Fauci went on 60 Minutes giving his views about how he felt about uh, the wearing of masks during a pandemic. Less than a week later, he was invited to a meeting with the Trilateral Commission to have a little bit of a conversation. They wanted to have a talk with Dr. Fauci. Soon after that, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Fauci began going on television talking about how he views masks during a pandemic. Now listen to what he has to say. Make sure you wear a mask. So you wear a mask. Then you want it to fit better. So one of the ways you could do it, if you would like to, is put a cloth mask over, which actually here and here and here, where you could get leakage in, is much better contained. Okay. That's all. Now she got the memo. He was not apprised of mask being a part of the New World Order. So you can listen to Fauci talking about, yeah, um, saying that masks don't work. Fauci himself saying that. And since I've said that, now I probably will have to post this on Odyssey because those words, masks, don't work. Fauci himself saying it, and he also said it with other pandemics and other uh, directors of CDC during those pandemics, whether it was a f swine flu or H1N1, I don't know. But they came out on mainstream media saying masks, no. They would smile saying, no, masks do not work. He says masks don't work March 8th meets with the Trilateral Commission, and then he's saying, put not just one, but two. How about three or four? Okay, Trilateral Commission. Yes, we absolutely do have a behind-the-curtain governance. They giving direction to the puppets that we see. But when people do not want to know, when people just think it's all, you know, just crazy thinking, that's when these people have an awful lot of power to change the world. And we suffer those changes because the changes are not love, fair, equitable, all that crap they say. We will be their slaves. That's what they want. So this video that I showed you first, this interview with Anthony Sutton, it's only like about 40 minutes, and he's talking about the American cooperation in World War II and how we built up the communists, the Soviet Union. Um, so look at what's happening today with the Ukraine and Russia and do not think that <clears throat> what you're hearing from the puppets what you're hearing from mainstream media is anywhere near the truth of what is taking place on both sides with Russia and Ukraine it's all a staged play it's very dangerous it's incredibly destructive it's coming from the minds of the most evil walking the planet Unfortunately, an awful lot of people are their puppets implementing their plans. And people just don't believe that we have that kind of evil. 
there are some of those new agers that just don't believe that evil exists. Great. Okay, well, it does. It does. And a whole lot of people are suffering the consequences of that evil every single day, more and more. That's why when I come across tweets on Twitter, one in particular that I came across, and I'm not sure where it is, but it was um, an author, Garrett, oh, I can't remember his last name, but he said in his tweet that he felt this was the most frustrating time to be alive just watching the tyranny unfold and not be able to do a thing about it. The only way in which we could ever even have a possibility of turning this tide is if these people are exposed to the majority of people and they believe it and they believe it and they begin to get rid of the puppets in their governments. Do you really think that that is a possibility? Let me know in the comment section.